Now we're going to look at stability in buoyant systems. So if I have a boat and it's floating and it's not changing its orientation, then that boat is stable. So imagine, and the concepts are fairly straightforward, and we can illustrate them with these nice simple little square boats. Suppose I have a little boat like this and I'm standing here and you're standing there. We're both equal distances apart and we'll presume for the moment that we both weigh the same amount. Then we'll have equal weights acting downwards in each of these locations. And so we would have a symmetric pressure force coming upwards in order to balance things out. So we've got pressure forces acting uniformly over the bottom of the boat. And we've got a weight distribution that although it's in discrete locations where I'm standing and where you're standing, it's also evenly spread over the bottom of the boat. And the boat will float at a depth in the water such that that volume of water displaced is equal to the mass of me plus you plus the whole boat. And so if we have that situation, then we'll wind up with the sum of the forces equal to zero. There are no net forces acting. There's some positive pressure force acting up, producing buoyancy, and there's some negative gravitational force acting down, causing, uh, causing a, a down force that offsets that buoyancy. So no net forces in the vertical direction. And moments. If there was a moment acting on this system about any point, and we can take that moment about any point we want, if there was a net moment about a point, then there would tend to be an acceleration around that point. So the boat would tend to rotate either this way or that way, depending on the sign of the moment. Now in this instance, no matter what point we take, we're going to find that the distributed forces balance out and the net moment around any point that we choose is going to be equal to zero. We've got a stable system. We're sitting in our little boat and we're floating nice and level because we've got our weight evenly distributed. Now this is a similar case. We've got exactly the same kind of thing going on. We've got the two of us in a boat. Uh, I'm down here, you're up here and we're displacing a volume of water that's equivalent to our mass and the mass of the boat and for this geometry to work out our boat here would have to go a lot farther into the depth of the page than our boat over here because the cross-sectional area looks smaller there than there. So this might be a boat that we had just changed uh, the, the orientation of. This one's going to be very narrow in this direction and wide in that direction. This one's narrow in this direction it'll be wide in the direction in and out of the page. Now you're standing up here on the flybridge way up above the surface of the water because you want to be able to see the fish or something and we'll have a system that's still going to be stable sitting in the water here. We've got for vertical forces an evenly distributed set of pressure forces on the bottom of the boat and we've got an evenly distributed set of masses for you and me up here on the uh, on the boat itself. So we've got gravity acting downwards and pressure forces acting upwards and they balance out so that we've got no net force in the z direction and if we look at it we can take a moment about any location that we want and we'll find that the net moment is also zero. So that system sitting there uh, and it's going to float stably in that configuration. Or is it? Well, let's first see what happens with this one. I think this one's going to work a little better. I'm going to feel safer on a wide boat than on a narrow boat anyway. So let's see what happens if you start walking over this way. Well, the pressure forces will be the same distribution, but now the mass distribution is getting shifted over this way. That results in a net moment in a counterclockwise direction, which is going to tend to turn the boat over like that. So what happens? Well, the next time around, we might have a boat that's now floating like this. I'm still here because I stayed where I was put, and you've come over to talk to me, and now the boat is leaning over. 
we still need to have those forces balanced in the Z direction. And so it's leaning over. We've got this end actually has come up out of the water, but we've still got the same amount of water displaced for the mass of the boat and the mass of the two of us. And if the boat has moved, it may have changed the distrib distribution of the pressure. We'll have a very small pressure force there, a much larger pressure force here, and declining along the way. And we can figure this out fairly straightforwardly by looking at how far each element of the boat is underwater. So now I can sum my forces. That's going to determine, for a given angle, how far under the water we are. And I've still got no net force in the vertical direction, so I'm not bobbing up and down. And if I've done all of this slowly, I'll have no net moment in the about any point, and I've got a new point of stability here. So as I change the mass distribution up on deck, I also wind up changing the pressure distribution underneath the hull, underneath the bottom of the boat, because the boat is going to change its orientation. And if all of these changes take place slowly, then there's going to be a whole sequence of positions along the way where we'll always find that the forces are balanced and the moments are balanced. And that corresponds to you moving from there over to here. If you came over slowly enough, then you get into a situation where we've leaned the boat over and we've got to here. Now suppose we haven't had time for the boat to move. Suppose here's the boat and you have suddenly rushed over to see me. The boat is still floating where it was, but I've still got the pressure distribution on the bottom, but now my weight distribution is completely offset. Some of the forces in the Z direction, still pretty close to zero because we're still in the same configuration we were, but now the sum of the moments any point I choose, there's going to be an overturning moment acting in that direction that's going to tend to rotate the boat and it's going to move it towards that situation. And if we eventually get to a configuration like that one where we can get back to where the moment is zero, then the boat will eventually come to an equilibrium like this. And that's a stable situation. So we've got an overturning moment. It has reached a point where it's going to cause the boat to rotate this way. But if the boat had rotated past this location a little more steeply to this point, if our moment at that point gave us a return, that would tend to rock us back in this direction and we'd return back towards this eventual stable situation. Our moment here is causing us to rotate back towards this more stable situation. On the other hand, let's go and look and see what happens with this taller boat. If I tip it a little bit, so let's just tip a little bit here. You're still up on the flybridge. I'm still down here. The boat's tipped over a little bit, so now we're sitting in a configuration something like this. The pressure's higher here and here, so we've moved our net pressure forces over towards the side of the boat, and our weight hasn't moved, so we've got an increase in the shift in this displacement over to this side. The sum of the forces in the Z direction are still equal to zero. And if I look at the sum of the moments here, I can imagine that the sum of the moments there might wind up giving me a returning moment. I might have more pressure force off-center than I've got bodies off-center. And that way, my boat would be stable if I pushed it over this far. It would tend to rotate back around that way.
So that would be an example of a stable system. So here in this configuration, if I move over that way a little bit, I've got a stable system. It moves back towards the center. On the other hand, if I tip the boat over a little further, let's go to something like this, and we'll assume I'm still standing here by some kind of magic, and you're still up on the flybridge. Again, I'm not convinced that I would stay there, but assuming you're still up on the flybridge, and the boat has healed over this far, we really haven't changed the distribution of the pressure forces on the bottom of the boat very much, but now you're way out here. And I can certainly see where that situation, if I did the arithmetic, might wind up giving me same buoyancy situation. It's still floating, still got f of z equal to zero. But now I've got a sum of the moments. If I add up all of the moments from the pressure forces and from you and, or sorry, and from me and from you up here on top, I've got a situation like this. So I've got a moment that's going to tend to tip me over further. And as I tip over further, you're moving further outboard. The moment's increasing. So here we have a situation that's fundamentally unstable. And that's kind of interesting. I went from this configuration, which if I disturbed it a little bit off to the side, generated a moment that caused me to come back. So it was stable to start with, but once the boat healed over too far, the system became unstable. So stability is something that changes as you change geometries. This one, which is low to the ground, it stayed stable even when we healed over quite a long way because we've got the uh, effects of the shift in buoyancy to the side being much bigger than the effects of the shift of the, uh, the mass inside to the side. But this one being a little too tall, you wound up a little too far outboard and the whole system became unstable. Now, in real life, I'm pretty confident that as soon as we got out to this angle over here, we're going to see some changes in the weight distribution on the boat. Even if it's not you and me, moving around really quickly to move towards the high side to right the boat and keep it from tipping over. There's going to be uh, liquids in our fuel tanks, fuel in the fuel tanks. There may be cargo that will slide from one side to another if it's not secured. So this is a very dynamic and, and changing situation. So instead of evaluating just for a pure solid system that has no dynamic elements to it, it's far better to go through the more detailed calculation and assess what is the current state of the current system and how will it change with time as we go forwards. Because the development of a, a, a stability or instability situation like this is going to be dynamic. It's not going to be something that you can predict simply and easily from a, a single solid model. So the bookkeeping is going to be complicated. You're going to need to account for all of the masses on board the ship or, or boat. You're going to account for how they move in the event that the uh, orientation of the boat changes. You're going to have to allow for the fact that the boat is always going to displace the same amount of water because that's its mass. There has to be a large enough buoyant force available here to keep it from sinking. And you then have to evaluate which direction this moment is going. And is that moment going to bring it back towards the original position? Or is that moment going to drive it further around away from that original position? And that's the difference between a stable situation and an unstable situation.